Hello guys and welcome back to my channel this week. My name is Priscilla. I am a Nigerian women's wear designer based in London. This video is going to be connected to one of my previous tutorials in which I shared how to make a pinafore dress. In that tutorial, I actually created buttonholes using my domestic machine and some of you guys actually wanted me to see how I did it. So the buttonhole footer came with my domestic machine which is the Brother LS14. I got this machine like 2-3 years ago and it's been coming strong i think i got it for around 80 pounds very good investment i even got a second one and i'm going to link it down below for anyone that is curious about the machine so in this video i'm going to be showing you guys how i sort of do the buttonhole using my domestic machine the setup the stitches i use just the whole lot so if you have a similar machine you actually know how to use a special footer that comes for free with your machine so if you like to see how i do this buttonhole thing then make sure to keep on watching I'm going to be using my trusty old brother LS17 sewing machine to demonstrate how to create a buttonhole using a domestic machine. If you have a similar model and a similar make, you should have a knob that has these types of stitches. So the stitches that you want to look out for are like a set of three. So it usually has one that is a top and a bottom, which is your A and C here. And then you have your sides, which is your B and your D. So the B is the for the left hand side and the D is for the right hand side. And the A is for the bottom and the C is for the top. So the way it works is you alternate between these stitches to create the full rectangular shape of a buttonhole. So I'm just going to go ahead and change my footer from my regular footer into my zip footer because that is what would help you create your buttonhole. So the footer normally comes with your machine, it comes for free as, as part of other sort of accessories and this is what mine looks like. It has a slider inside that you can use to adjust the length of your buttonhole. The next thing you want to keep in mind is the size of your button. The biggest buttonhole that this footer can make is four centimeters. So any button bigger than that is going to be problematic to work with. So you want to go ahead and measure your button and check for the width because the width of the button has to be smaller than the buttonhole so that the button can successfully slide through the button hole when you want to take off your, your shirt or your jacket or wherever this button is going to sit. So now we've decided on the width of the button. This button was about three centimeters wide. We're going to be working with the widest sort of width or dimension that this footer comes with. So I quickly got myself some calico and I'm just going in to mark my buttonhole line and I'm drawing this in with a chalk because I want something that would wear off and wash off naturally without leaving any mark on my fabric. So I'm just marking my 4cm like this, marking my beginning and my ends because this is where my end stitches are going to sit and I'm just repeating this a second time just in case the first one doesn't work out right. We have a backup stitch or a backup buttonhole that I can show you guys. So I'm just going in here to change from my regular footer and I just pull it down like this and I'm going to fix my buttonhole footer like so. Just push the round end into that plastic foot that is hanging from this part of the machine. So I'm just grabbing the piece of fabric with the marks and I'm starting on this end here. So this would allow me to progress upwards when it's time to sew. So I'm going to start with A which is the bottom end stitch and you sew like this ensuring the footer is in this direction that it can't move and then you turn the knob to your B stitch which is the side stitch on the left hand side and this is going to sew upwards. So getting these directions is quite easy, quite straightforward because the knob usually tell you the directions that the stitch go in. So once you sewn this one upwards like this, when you get to the end, you turn back to the end stitch which is your C which is your top end stitch or your top stopper stitch for the buttonhole and that stitch is what will help to secure that end of the buttonhole before going back to your D which is 
the side stitch on the right hand side so by the time you sew this D stitch downwards to connect to your first sort of bottom end stitch you have your full rectangular shape that is your buttonhole but I like to repeat this step twice because it just creates a more fuller stitch that looks nice I don't just know why I like to go back at least once or even twice if the thread is thin or if I just want it to look more rounded and full so once you get all the way to the end the button hole is complete and I'm just going to take this out and cut the hole open so I just repeated this a second time created a second button hole and they look they look fairly okay I have to say and I'm just going in here with my tiny scissors pushing one end through and then cutting carefully up until the end you don't want to cut into those end stitches because they are what is they are the stitches keeping the buttonhole side stitches in place so you just cut carefully through until you almost get to the end but you don't cut those end or stopper stitch so these are my buttonholes all done i'm just going in to check with my button that it actually goes through and it worked it was a little bit tight but the thing to take away from this is you want to ensure your buttonhole is at least one centimeter bigger than your button so it easily goes in and out is done your buttonhole process is complete and it's really simple it's really straightforward if you are working with a smaller button you adjust the slider to create a smaller buttonhole and that should be it if you guys have any questions suggestions or ideas please ask them down below and i will see you guys in my next one bye